Okay, these are our lovely meerkat group. The proper term for a group of meerkats is a mob, and this mob is 10 animals strong. Meerkats are only found in South Africa in the wild, nowhere else. Very, very social. They live in large family groups where you have an alpha male and female, and then the rest of the group are normally their offspring. But only the alpha pair in that group will breed, but the whole group will actually help to rear the litters each time she has one. And the litter is normally about four youngsters at a time. Being from South Africa, it's very dry, sandy sort of environment, hence the deep layer of sand on the bottom of this enclosure. One of the great things about that is for enrichment, you can do some really basic, easy enrichment, which is what I'm going to do now with this, which is just some dried mealworms, which they love. And all you do is you find a hole, you throw some mealworms in it, and you bury them. And you can do that all around the enclosure with a very small amount of food, but actually spread it quite quickly and easily. Um, and it just gives them uh, lots of time then spent digging, which is what they'd have to do in the wild. Because in the wild, the bulk of their food is insects and plant roots, etc. on there as well, and the odd small lizard. But a lot of insects which they have to dig for. So it's natural for them to be looking and digging in every like nook and cranny in the enclosure. So we try to simulate that by burying food as much as possible. We also do lots of other enrichment with these guys. One thing that does work really well with these guys is plastic bottles with small holes cut in it and then live or dried mealworms put inside that so that they can move them around. Um, and also toilet roll tubes. So you can take a toilet roll tube, put some food in it, fold the end, spend ages ripping them apart to get the food out. And even a humble cardboard box. You literally just throw an old cardboard box in here and they will spend ages pulling at it, poking around in the corners, ripping it up. So the reason they're so interested in this is because this has been buried on one side in the sand for a while. There is now naturally going to be insects in there like wood lice and other little grubs. All the stuff that enriches them and, and is stimulating for them is really around food based. So it's about making their feed session stretch out so you don't want to feed them in a bowl with a lot of the food because they'll eat it very quickly if you can scatter it around the enclosure you can make them work a little bit for it you can see you've got one guy up there at the moment doing guard duty normally there's at least one on guard duty sometimes um, especially if they're a bit nervous about something you'll get more individuals doing guard duty and in the wild they'd be looking out for all sorts of predators anything really from lions which will sometimes just chase and kill a meerkat more for the sport than anything, the excitement of the chase, if you like, and even things like snakes, birds of prey, and they have different alarm calls for different species. So the alarm call they shout out for something like a lion or a leopard would be a different alarm call um, than the one that they would shout if it was a snake, for example, because most things they'll run away and hide underground from. That doesn't work against the snake, so then instead they'll actually all mob the snake, so they'll put their tails up, shout charge if you like, and the whole group will run after the snake and try and harass it and drive it away so that it's no risk of it going into their burrows where they need to hide from other predators. Well, they do like the sun, so they do a lot of sun worshipping. And their house, they go in that and then round the corner, so that stops the wind blowing in, into their house, which is heated to 20 degrees, 20 to 22 degrees on the thermostat all the time. Our meerkats are given quite a varied diet. So their typical morning starts off with their breakfast, which is live giant mealworms, and they're just scattered around live. Also dry cat biscuits. And then mid-morning, they have chopped up day old chickens. And then afternoon time, they have another feed that comprises of live giant mealworms, dry cat biscuits, and grated fruit and vegetables, but mainly vegetables. So a lot of grated carrots, sweet potato, bit of broccoli, that sort of stuff, celery, all grated up nice and fine. End of the day, the lights go off in the house, but the house is then still fully heated so that they go to sleep naturally and it's nice and warm in there. And that's a typical basic day, but then there's, there's other things as well. They'll have staff coming in doing talks and we'll scatter a bit of food and maybe some points they'll bring in toilet roll tubes for them to rip up. That was a good reaction. So they heard the, uh, the calling of the lemurs. 
some of them ran into the house. Some of them over there. That's actually another form of enrichment, really, because it's bringing out natural behaviour, which is, it's something weird, you're not sure what it is, you run and hide. Now, into the point over there's got gone up on guard duty. He's gone up to have a look and see if we can see what's uh, causing the issue. There's a couple of really cool facts about meerkats. One is the fact that they have this social group system, if you like, where young females will actually help to rear their brothers and sisters, um, which makes it sound like meerkats are all sweetness and light. And uh, I do remember the first documentary that really came out about meerkats was called Meerkats United. And then a year or so later, they did Meerkats Divided because they realised there was a lot more to it. They weren't quite as sweet and lovely. But a horrible but interesting fact is one in four meerkats in the wild is killed by another meerkat. And that can quite often be a member of the same family group. So if a young female comes into season and starts looking sexually active as if she's going to mate, the dominant female won't generally stand for that. That female will be ostracised until she either comes out of breeding condition or even banished from the group. So in the last year, we've moved five individuals from this group where individuals have been banished from the group. And you can just tell by their behaviour that they're being bullied away from the food, they're being pushed into the corners out of the way from the main group. So what we do then is take them out, find somewhere that's looking to set up a new group. You can add an unrelated one of the opposite gender, and then they start a new group. Meerkats are obviously a firm favourite with the public to see in the enclosure, but also for experiences, because you can come in, sit inside the indoor area, and the meerkats will just basically climb all over you. They, they just treat you as a food supply, really.